Oh yeah, you almost died. Then and then the scribe job. Yeah, I almost died for no reason. You at least have like a cool photo. Yeah, least. we just got a we just got a message from your from your wife that was like, no big deal. Eric's almost dead. We got him coming back. Don't send photos. Don't send flowers. That was it. Like we we're like, should we come see him? She's like, he does this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it did reaffirm for me that if this was my last day on earth, I'd still want to do this podcast with you guys. Yeah, no, from the hospital bed, you were messaging us with actual work relevant <laughs> yeah, things yeah not just i'm alive but get to work clowns yeah so, like, i was impressed i got some very some very uh, I was good founder gms when i was in that hospital i feel yeah. like they the, you know i was rewarded our deal flow is primarily driven by like close to death situations <laughs> near death experience. Experience. Yeah, yeah 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 it, it makes sense it's a great lever though because you're like you're like please i'm looking you, to make a last investment you wouldn't re- <laughs> you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't refuse a wounded soldier yeah. <laughs> I, I fought our country nobody podcast was brought to you by meat sweats <laughs> we're all up from our nap <laughs> dude that was I, Oklahoma like Oklahoma joe's will take it out i'm of very you. glad i did not have a, a, a robust breakfast it was a protein shake and a drive down and like oh, rocket got, pig rocket yeah, pig yeah. for the win you got to know when we're going to have a meeting that is going to be murdered. calories we murdered the casey joe's <laughs> gonna be calories um we've been been out of the game for a minute it's very good yeah, to be people reunited. are asking like hey what what's the deal with the podcast we've been inundated by yeah uh, by an email listener listener <laughs> <laughs> i know you want this and uh listener if i may um we want it also so we're happy to be here we do owe you an explanation about our absence from your ears which is that al moved to hawaii for the summer listener I was, <laughs> I was in Hawaii. No, yeah, we're, we're remodeling the house. So I went to Hawaii for a couple of months and then literally from sea level, took a flight 27 hours on Air India, which I didn't know was the, was the Ryanair of, uh, yeah, uh, of the Eastern world. It is the Ryanair of the Eastern world. My first class seat. I don't, I don't know. Anyway. From sea level to 14,000 feet and then hiked for 12 days up to 18,000 feet, which is not as easy as it sounds. I know you're hearing this, listener. You're hearing this thing, 18,000, that's easy. That's not. That's base camp Everest. That's exactly right. I hiked to the base camp of Mount Everest. I didn't even try and go up, and it was still hard. This was the plan. The plan was base camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wanted to go see the big mama. I didn't want to die. You, you pass these you things. Are like, is that, is that they're like, <laughs> here lies Peter, father of four. He loved doing hard things. And I'm like, why, why would Peter ever think? Why would he climb Mount Everest? And then you look around and you're like, there are thousands of these monuments of here lies Jimmy. Take the world by the horns. Father of four kids and the, like very loving husband. Jimmy, what are you doing, wow. my man? Like, are they still? I hear the bodies are still like frozen there. In this the season, like, uh, well, I was talking to them. They're like, oh yeah, last season twenty people died. And I'm like, twenty people died. It's like That's it's like lot. a meaningful. I think it's like thirteen percent of of hikers don't make it down or something to the peak. No, they they'll make it to the peak. Most of them make it to the peak. I, I, well, I think a lot of it's more packed now than it ever has been. But like coming down is uh is where you die. This is. There's an analogy in this listener. There's an analogy in this for entrepreneurship. You can get to the peak. Most injuries will happen on the descent. On the descent. You have you if you know a founder that sold their company and stepped back, give them a hug, will you? Give them a hug. They have nothing to do now and they feel like they're losers because they used to be important. But give them a hug. That is they're crazy. stepping carefully. They're tired. They're making mistakes. They're off the edge. That was a better analogy than I thought we were going to get out of that, <laughs> for sure. Was this how how much more uh, compared to compared to Kilimanjaro? Yeah, Kilimanjaro was higher. You go to like twenty thousand feet in Kili, but but you're like you you start in the rainforest at the base and you climb up because you've done it too, yeah, right? Yeah. And you climb up and then you have like two days where it's kind of crappy and you yeah. have like a night or two of sleep. On the on the base camp trek, I was on I was on this trail for like twelve days and you're like it's just cold. And the food sucks, and I'm not sleeping great, and it like it compounds, and you're like, "Is my my brain is swelling?" That's what I, I guess altitude sickness is. Your head swells, oh. and uh, you're like, "My head, my whole body hurts," and you're dry heaving and puking your guts out with uh, with ginger soup mm. <laughs> and, oh. and one hard boiled egg for breakfast. 
Uh, no, it, it honestly, it's a beautiful track. Everybody should do it. You, you'll love it. It's great. <laughs> great sell. Unbelievable sell. I can't <laughs> wait. I, can't I like, wait. I, I'm, I'm trying to do a hard thing a year, like one big, uh, audacious mm. hike or something because it, it's, I'm much better at working out when I have a thing. If I don't have a thing, I cannot convince myself to go to the gym because my wife loves me anyway. It's her fault. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, it is her fault. I'm it like, I don't have to do push-ups. She's already into it. Yeah. And uh, but like, if I have a thing coming up, then I'm like, okay, it's worth the gym. Like, let's yeah. let's go. I got to stay healthy. Got to be ready because I don't want to get out there and die. You're a lucky man. I, it, my wife has made it extremely clear to me that her love is conditional on my incredible physical yeah, condition. That makes, that makes sense. Dude, yeah. you, go, you go bald. You're on a flight to Turkey tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting that scalp fixed up, brother. You're like, there is no chance. You get hair plugs annually just to <laughs> <Yeah>. be sure. <laughs> I'm overseeding the scalp just, just to make sure the, the stuff grows in good. Uh, yeah, is- so I was gone for a little bit. and uh, and And then you came back and Eric had a job. Yeah. So we've had no you our last podcast was in March. So like no since then you yeah, you've done uh, time in Hawaii, climbed Everest. I had my lung collapsed, then I was in Michigan for the summer, then uh Oh, oh yeah, you almost died. Then and then the scribe job. Yeah, I almost died for no reason. You at least have like a cool photo. Yeah, we just got a we just got a message uh, from your from your wife that was like, No big deal. Eric's almost dead. We got him coming back. Don't send photos, don't send flowers. That was it. Like we we're like, should we come see him? She's like he does this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it did reaffirm for me that if this was my last day on earth, I'd still want to do this podcast with you guys. Yeah, no, from the hospital bed, you were messaging us with actual work relevant <laughs> yeah. things. Yeah. Not just I'm alive, but get to work clowns. Yeah. So, like, I was impressed. I got some very, some very uh, good founder GMs when I was in that hospital. I feel yeah. like they, the, you know, I was rewarded. Our deal flow is primarily driven by like close to death situation near death experience yeah 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 yeah. 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 it makes sense it's a great lever though because you're like you're like please i'm looking to make a last investment you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't wouldn't refuse a wounded soldier i I fought our country nobody i'm sorry i didn't respond to your stupid email i was in the hospital i almost died i will be the most low maintenance investor you've ever had i will be dead (laughs) no updates required (laughs) i will take your i'll take your money because you're gonna be dead anyway probate's not gonna figure out from the hospital do it for my kids for my family (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that uh yeah so it was a, it was a busy summer it was a busy summer we didn't lowest, we didn't spend a lot of- your lowest stress investor because <laughs> i'm there's a 30 percent chance i'm dead please take my money yeah uh yeah we, had, we were all in different places geographically for a while but i think we managed to do some good work on the portfolio side we just didn't go out didn't oh, get a lot yeah. of podcasting done until we were yeah no we, we did all invest in the same place we just didn't do podcasting. listener yeah. we've been investing we've been doing doing our jobs yeah um, which we're going to catch everybody up on. I feel like there's at least there's probably going to be two episodes because um, we got like three quarters worth of investments to catch up on in podcast language. Allegedly, um, yeah. allegedly, and Al's had some cool. We, I don't know. We've we've learned some things. We've been reflecting. We've been growing. Uh huh. Uh-huh, um, uh huh. And we're going to go through all of it. We should start with Q two. Do we, we do we have any other life update things? Or we should just start how with is Q2? how is CEOing. CEO is good. I, I feel like I'm uh, greatly increasing the empathy for like operators always. And we are now the like, <laughs> three a full three CEO fund. I don't have to like qualify that anymore. True. Uh, a lot of meetings, as it turns out. Yeah. Um, sometimes, sometimes the idea of CEO is sexier than being CEO. I, look, I had a front row seat to CEOing for a long time. You were not like, naive. To I was this. under no yeah. delusion that this was going to be like. I feel like I still am under a bit of a delusion. Like, I don't remember it ever being hard. I'm like, I could be a CEO again. I should do that one more time. And then I'm like, I'm sorry, you want me to work Thursdays? (laughs) (laughs) Thursday's my day. That's the the me day. Yeah, you just peek at that calendar. You're like, no, hard (laughs) hard no on that. Um, Yeah, a lot of meetings, uh, a lot of moving parts. Like, getting almost everybody I know has, like, who is CEO has built their companies around them and so like yeah. they're an expert in every domain they've like slowly accrued it so the like experience of onboarding as a ceo is kind of wild do you want to talk about like what scribe is yeah i can do that give me a give me a two sentence summary scribe is a professional publisher which is basically the opposite model of a traditional publishing company um we will support anyone who wants to publish their book we are basically a professional services firm to help them write edit publish and grow promote their book and like like uh 
Yeah, like Goggins is your claim to fame, right? Like, like that guy that guy used you guys, didn't he? Yeah, Goggins and, has sold like five million books. And by like, by wow. doing it himself and owning the publishing rights, you pay like, you know, you're you're tens of thousands up front for the writer and all the editing and everything, and then you own everything and whatever you sell, you keep, right? That's, yeah. So we, we are the path for authors to keep 100% of their ownership, rights, royalties, all their creative decisions. Like yeah. if you go to a traditional publisher, you get like an advance of like 50, 100,000, maybe 200,000. If you're a huge writer, you'll get a million bucks. But like you also give up your creative control, final cut, and like 85% of your royalties. Yeah. So if, if yeah. you think of it like a business, like you're giving up most of your equity I, it, before you even build. The it's thing. been funny. My mom just, my mom just wrote, a, we, we did a book deal for her because my mom's a famous YouTube uh, quilter. Uh, talk, talk to your moms. They know about her. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so we did a book deal and it was, it was funny because my idea, I feel like, I feel like, like raising venture money is a lot of the same thing where like the idea of it, of it validating you and all this stuff, like it carries yeah. so much cachet. And then you talk to somebody that's just done it and they're like, Oh, I'll never do this again. This is terrible. But like, <laughs> n- yeah. not us. We're almost dead. We're not going to be bad. Easy. We're great. <laughs> I'm talking other guys. But th- but like in the in the book writing world, yeah. So she she gets an advance, which is very nice. And then we we write this book. They they uh, they give her an author that she pays for out of her advance. To like it, it's a cut of all this that goes yeah. towards paying the author. We write the book. The book was great. Um, and then, I, like in my mind, I'm like, I see these guys on the Today Show and stuff talking about their books all the time. That's probably well, we got a publisher. We're going to do this. Yeah. And like we launch, and they're like, all right, can you email your list one more time? I'm like, I'm doing all the sales. Yeah. And uh, and yeah. then they want me to send this, send the the people to Amazon so we can get on the Amazon bestseller. And I'm like, I don't even get to keep the margin on the books that we're doing. Like, this is silly. And it's literally like all the promo comes from us. All the like everything yeah. is supposed to, like they they put it all back on on you and then they're like oh and we got you on uh, St Joe KQET two channel news and I'm like that that's not helping me you guys it was a yeah. very disappointing or very disillusioned uh, on traditional publishing because yeah outside of the advance she's made zero dollars on it and it's like in your world yeah that like we would eat what we kill and if we have high confidence in what we can do and you get what you pay for right yeah. like their model is that like the cost the pr the marketing like those are line items and the conceit of the whole thing is like well most of these books are going to fail so like we're yeah. just going to be- place 100 bets tell all the authors to like go go for it and then like we'll have some breakouts in their portfolio and ours is like no every book like the author is the ceo of that book yeah. they should get the majority of, or all of the you know few dollars per book that they sell not cents on the dollar and then they'll have the resources and motivation to invest in their own and they'll get the pr they pay for they'll get the marketing they pay for they'll send people to amazon they'll go get the reviews like they'll have the reason to do the work instead of um i'm increasingly a fan of your model thank you we want to know we would love to do jenny's next book Bo, when do we get the analog or the uh the anthology of a youth basketball (laughs) when does this happen (laughs) I could write a great book on youth basketball. <laughs> I don't know if there's a lot of readers for it, so I think that they may not just bring more drama. Test. Bring more drama <laughs> in the highly dramatized youth basketball version. Yeah, are I there, still think low readers are there good. I'm sure, like I don't know. Tiger that was the Woods. whole premise of the Babysitter Club, dude. That was yeah, it. Yeah, that was that's it. Fair, that's fair. That's Millions fair. of readers, yeah. like Serena and Venus. Dad write a book, or like uh, I, there was a movie, but I don't know if it's based on a book. I don't either, but the movie was awesome. We yeah. need we need Pierce to become an all star superstar, so you can write. This is all just a long gotta, con, so that Eric can get a sale, and you'll write a book with him. We got to edit that out. This is a secret weapon. I would we're, never put that we're pressure we're on Pierce. Not so publicizing. Okay. Yeah, we're not publicizing. <laughs> there, there are many secrets we must keep uh, until the uh, until the appropriate time. Understood. I don't know which secrets. <laughs> We all thrive on low expectations. I oh, think, yeah. Is that's the self degradating. Uh, we'll never, we're never going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, we, we, we invested in some companies. We dabble. It's fine. Oh, no. We're uh, leading the frontier of nuclear technology. Yeah. No, it's nothing. <laughs> we try to, it's, it is an unfortunate. That is literally how I pitch like LPs where I'm like, oh, you know, we, we got some energy investments. We got some stuff. We're doing some cool things. Yeah. I think our like Midwestern humility is really working against us yeah. in the LP pitching department. Yeah. yeah. Um, very reasonable, like measured messaging about this. It's an unfortunate part of the like VC game theory that being a like braggadocious D bag is actually like accelerates the. You- 
you go back to like your your first introduction letter to like this. It's like you shouldn't invest in us if you don't want to wait twelve years for returns, and we make no promises <laughs> that there will even be returns. We are investing in the future of humanity. That's, yes, highly in a highly speculative <laughs> fashion. Past performance does <laughs> right. not oh, indicate yeah. future results. <laughs> you compare uh, that to sequoias of like yeah. we will almost guarantee a return. I should put more unicorn emojis in my Twitter bio. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I'm hearing, yeah, bro. Yeah. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> or we can say we like us, we like ourselves the way we are, and just uh, <laughs> just keep plugging. It's all are we capable like, of that. It's all just like affirmations and stuff in yeah. a room full of balloons. We're a pin. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, enough banter. Let's get to the juice. Okay, we ha- we have many investments to catch you all up on. Um, Every one of which we are proud of. We love all of our children equally. Um, I don't care for Job. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent callback. Um, so we're going to pick up in Q2, uh, I believe is where we left off um, from March. So I'm going to go through Q2 investments. And that starts with Oros and a founder, Ethan Loosebrock. Uh, mm. If you are mm-hmm. a dedicated listener of this podcast, you may have already heard my interview with Ethan and Eli Dorado, um, cause we had him do like, come to a full episode. Uh, but I love this dude. I love this idea. I think it's like a perfect example of the kind of deep tech that like sort of our taste is evolving towards, which is the, like, there's a very obvious, huge demand. This is a brand new co- capability for humanity. If it is buildable. Um, and Ethan's been like chasing this idea for 10 years or so uh he like read about read papers about all these different battery like chemistry innovations in undergrad very specifically positioned himself to like work in the lab that these things were coming out of like this, this is the long the con yeah, yeah it's it's like, just, like, yeah. a long con. he's like i am going i think he said this in my very first meeting she will like, be mine i want to oh, be the yes. john d rockefeller of batteries and i was like please explain that to me <laughs> and an hour later i was like yep this is fantastic come in um so it's a very it uh it is the innovation is a chemistry piece of the manufacturing the lithium ion battery manufacturing process and he wants to perfect this dramatically increase the energy density of lithium ion batteries like from 5 to 10x um which is huge and in, like my layman's understanding is that it increases like the molecular surface area between the cathode and the anode so you can like transfer much more you store much more energy much more quickly and dispatch it much more quickly. Um, but the upshot would mean like your phone battery would last for a week or your Tesla could drive across the country or your solar it, panel could keep you off the grid for months. Yeah, I remember the, st- the stuff we were worried about was like, was like, like our, our, if we were talking ourselves out of this, it was like, it was like, man, the number of people that have had the idea of let's make a better battery is many people. Yeah. And, uh, and, and like that honestly that's the biggest strike against uh investing in something like this is that like the bodies littered along the road are so many but it does not mean that you should stop trying to innovate in that space and like and like see that future and uh and these guys i mean they've got it's a unique tech it's uh it's something that hasn't been developed yet that they you know very much believe has that potential and what to what you were saying like if they're right and we can make one tenth the number of batteries that we need, like we are able to do a dramatic uh, improvement for yeah. humanity. Totally changes what's physically possible. Yeah. Like electric jets become a thing, like vertical takeoff and landing, which is. There's, I mean, that's really what we're trying to get. Shit. Yeah. Like, oh, I want to. Yeah. Have you seen that Jets in Air? Yeah, you said you already yeah. got a pre-order. In, no, yeah. I tr- I tr- I sent him an email. I was like, I know it says max weight two fifteen. <laughs> what, what does two forty five look like? And they were like, it will dramatically reduce the airtime. And I was like, okay, well, call me, call me when the battery gets better. So I want it ninety two thousand, ninety six thousand dollars. I'm in. I just want to be the first person in Hamilton that flies his yeah, quadcopter yes, and parks do. it right behind. Be like, I'd like a donut, please. Uh, <laughs> They're like, is that thing going to take off on the I, way home? It's like 80% of the reason I drive a Tesla, just because like I wanted the novelty of the X-Wing doors. Now it's just a car with goofy doors. But like in the beginning, I was like, yeah, hey, yeah. guys, it'll dance too. You want to see? Yep. And I just need, I need that Jetson Air for the first couple flights in. We'll be like, who the crap is It'd this? be so awesome on the farm too. Dude. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Not having to drive down roads? Going over old guys' farms that are like <laughs> shooting at me like a drone. 
I have a vision. Anyway, yeah. So we're that's really why we're investing in battery tech is so that we so that Al big fly. guys. So the big guys get the chance to fly in the air on these personalized aircrafts. That's what we're doing. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a I'm very excited about this one. It is like not a typical startup. It's like just battery chemistry engineers in the lab building <laughs> yeah, building right, prototypes. Right now, their their updates are like. Hey, we got the, we got this cell to hold this thing. And yeah. you're like, oh, neat. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is that. It, it, is, it is like real missionaries who are very proud of like, here is a bag of battery. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that's pretty awesome. Hell yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah. Here's a bag of battery. Yeah, that's a bag of battery. That's it's pretty neat though. And remind me how close we are to this being world change. Okay, yeah. yeah re- yes. Okay. Almost there. Getting there. Um, but it we were talking about this a little before we started recording, though, like the difference between technology chasing a market and a technology just like unlocking a very obvious market and this is one I, i've heard elon musk on interviews be like as soon as you have a battery if you have have one battery prototype cell that can demonstrate higher than like this energy density which is currently the tesla like state of the art send it to me and i will send you millions of dollars yeah. like buy your company invest your like we will there is infinite demand for yeah. this immediately yeah um and it, it is a cool you, you're there's a huge graveyard of batteries lots of insane claims but we like needless to say we hope they're right we hope they're right <laughs> yep, we, hope we they're placed right. our bet uh we hope they're right yeah they're they're early they're chugging along i'm ex- super excited to see where that one goes um next is a redacted we cannot this st- startup uh, is still in stealth what come we on invested you in can't it. Even see we know the name all of, no, the name is in public. Yeah, um, I checked the founder's LinkedIn. Still, like, which still one is stealth. it? Is it a Billy Bob? Is it? Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 oh, we're yeah. working from the same. What row, row, row forty-eight is what I believe we can refer <laughs> to it as. Yep. Uh, to what does row forty-eight do? Serial <laughs> number. Uh, also, can't disclose what that. A, what, uh, what industry? Let's just go human health technology. Oh yeah! Oh no. <laughs> damn it! I see. I honestly didn't even know which one we're talking about. I'm over here saying like, no, get- no. <laughs> we've kept it a secret from Al. Also, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that should be public this year. Um, but they have been like making great progress. It is uh, like new technology that's getting sort of i want to work on a startup that's so valuable that i can't even say the name i just want to i want to do that one time and be like if people knew the name of the startup i was building they would flip out (laughs) (laughs) i'm not there yet we're not i'm not as cool as these guys um so more updates to come on that one when we're allowed to share it um next is alt hq Alt, alt hq is uh is this very very cool founder mike zhang mike zhang i i uh i i know through we're like the top 100 entrepreneurs under 28 or something where'd you meet 20 him? years ago at the white house yeah you know when we were hanging at the white yeah, house okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. mike's story is Which, rad though is this obama's white house is yeah. this clinton's white house what are we talking i think it was a i think it was obama i think okay. it was obama's white house and he couldn't be there for a small business day because he had to go to nike or something i mean real douche that guy <laughs> we didn't even hang out with uh the random tour that came through the uh no so so mike mike mike's story i love because when he was 14 he started the airsoft mega superstore and like this dude as a 14 year old was import exporting grew his company to like 40 million dollars a year 50 million dollars a year so as a 14 15 year old this is he, wild he said his like immigrant families parents like bet their life savings and they, on and his they all, business as they a all started year old. working for him yeah dude guy's just so so sharp what an animal. um so anyway he's done he's done a bunch of companies ceo of a bunch of stuff and uh he came to us with an idea that he's working on right now in the sort of uh like aftermarket private equity spaces so like like investments in private equity yeah, yeah. letting that be searchable digestible reportable standardized it's a it's it's another one of those things where like oh yeah there's a bunch of bodies along the way a bunch of people that have tried to do this uh anybody that actually does figure this out is sitting on a gold mine and, and it's going to be brilliant uh why you and he his thing is he's got he's got a couple of people that like are very engaged that are the people that can make it happen right so he's got investors on the cap table and like his first couple of uh of use cases that he's that he's got using the product are the people that you'd want using the product and trying it out big family offices with yep. like more than a hundred 
private invest, maybe more than 50, like active private investments. I think he said is like the sweet spot where the tools really start to make a difference. And it's cool because some of his early stuff, the tech, the tech overlap to stuff that we've done was, was interesting where we were able to, able to provide some value pretty quick. So he's, he's great. I actually, I need to check in with him. I, uh, I sent him some popcorn at Christmas. Uh, need, need to go say hi, see how he's doing, but, uh, a great, super smart guy. I mean, you, you bet on these, on these crazy smart like savant dudes every time and so he's one of those that we love and uh, are excited to see what he does i think the, the timing of his idea is good too in the sense that like the capability of like a smart ai software to like extract all of this data and actually have it be correct and yeah. not need a ton of cleanup and proactively surface the right information could save a ton of time we have a smart model and say how would you categorize this how help me tag this so that it's, it's searchable and falls in the right spaces and stuff like that kind of thing just has never been possible until like a year ago yeah and all of a sudden all of a sudden there's a real swing at it yeah yeah and i know some of the people who we have as lps who are listening are good like fits for this and could be good early beta yeah. testers like if you if you manage a bunch of private investments uh let us put you in touch with with mike zhang and you can pilot this thing first first invest in our in our uh fund yeah, and yeah. then we'll take your call <laughs> <laughs> don't linkedin message us without <laughs> being in it's a good time to double down on rolling, <laughs> rolling fun we've got the uh all right, that's Q. Oh, no, no, no. we oh, got one, one, one more, one more, one more. Yeah. Um, also, Al. Oh, yeah, yeah, Zencaster. So Zencaster uh, is a buddy of mine, Josh Nielsen, who, uh, you know, know and love, very smart guy, great story. Uh, he, he, he built, he's like, honestly, I think he's the world's greatest audio file on the internet. Like, he's the guy, he's the guy that like, oh, I, I fixed the audio drift in Node because no doubt a thing where like when you're recording on the internet that you can have, they call it like an audio drift. And he's like, yeah, Spotify called their engineers called me and asked me how I did it. And I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. so <laughs> he's like that kind of guy, right? It's like, it's like du- dude has thought about and worked in audio more in like in, in the JavaScript, uh, you know, sort of Python world than anybody else out there. And uh, he's got some smart dudes on the team that like are really solving some stuff. So Zencaster is a is an is a podcasting software for helping creators easily record and create uh, podcasts and, and audio on the internet. They've added a ton of features, done a bunch of really cool stuff. Um, and what they're working on right now, which I, I think is great, is they're helping monetize small creators. And so we've we've had it's part of our thesis for a long time that somebody is going to solve. The ability for me to go and advertise on podcasts in a very dynamic, easy way. It should be as easy as like placing Facebook ads. And, uh, and it's not, it's all done with brokers. And then you have like, you have like these broad ones where Audible can buy for a penny, you know, <laughs> put their ad on a bunch of trash stuff, but like they don't know where it's going. They don't know, uh, you know, the, the data and stuff that needs to exist for that to be a real advertising thing for people to sink millions into hasn't existed and these guys are cracking that nut and so that's what so they're staring very hard at and uh it's one of those things that like they have a profitable business as is and they're just they have all the time in the world to just solve this problem and keep banging their heads on it and so they've got they introduced a monetization product we got pretty excited about um it's it's uh i i don't know i don't know the fervor that it's rolling out right now because onboarding was taking some time but like they will continue to just stare at this problem until uh podcasting and advertising on podcasting is seamless and big brands can come in and place big bets on this stuff and uh they'll just take a cut of the of that space and honestly you probably end up getting bought by uh by a spotify or some giant audio uh thing like a netflix or something or a youtube would be very smart to like be a part of their world uh in the end so that's what that's what we're investing in that big long shot of like the the advertising on audio being solved in this very programmatic way yeah Th- they make sense to me from both a podcaster's perspective and yeah, ad- they're, and they're great software for podcasters yeah. yeah it's good software for podcasters and to, to have one solution go all the way from like a microphone to monetization as a podcaster is huge and like i'm, I'm a huge believer in like the audio movement that like those ads can have really like both be really accurate based on if you have good data on what the show is and who's listening to it yeah. um, and be highly effective. And so like, I am excited to use their ad product at, at like at scribe. Cause I think it's a perfect way to reach uh, a awesome. very specific yeah, number of yeah. people. Yeah. 
Anyway, on to the next quarter, gentlemen. No, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited about all those. Um, I think it's going to be a great quarter. Uh, those those updates have been coming in, coming in hot. Um, Q3. Oh, these are both so They're good. Amazing. You I guys know. are excited Q, for Q3. Q3 was pretty sweet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I like As I look at everything, actually, from... Wait, before we get into it, can we say the names? <sighs> yeah, can we yeah, say... Yes, oh, yes, fine, yes, okay. Yes, yes, yes. okay. Oh, talk about Adam Limbs, bro. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you were excited about. Yeah, this I was one. very. I was and remain extremely yeah. excited about Adam Limbs. Uh, I, I believe I, the phrase was like, "You guys can invest if you want. I'm investing." <laughs> yeah, Adam Adam Limbs is doing the thing from the future where they make prostheses that really work. They're robotic prostheses. I grew up with a dad with one hand, um, and spent a lot of time from the time I was a kid realizing how that changes your interaction with the world, um, and. Uh, they are they are building the iRobot version of prostheses roughly um with probably uh, i think inarguably the smartest people in the world like the, the who do what they do um and it is one of these like we've all seen what they are building in sci-fi movies and read about it in books and they're like doing the real thing um and it is also one that um they've already overcome i think so many technical hurdles that it is really an execution mode it was i think a relatively expensive deal for us in terms of what we invest in but also like uh, uh, there's like near there's basically no limit on how big the company could be that owns that space and so um you know if you go to their website you will immediately see why it is exciting for somebody who grew up with a dad with one hand it is <laughs> yeah. um it it looks like magic that is going to exist in our lifetime and that is pretty awesome yeah atom adamlimbs.com and, and and the 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 big swing is like if they can solve this for like a human hand that really should be every robot's hand also right yeah so like as you see all the human the crazy humanoid robotic stuff coming out like through figure and the tesla bot and stuff i think they are probably farther along in like the mechanics of the hand because they've been trying to yeah. perfectly recreate a human hand with a very light touch um thing so the whole thing is only like a few pounds and yeah. because it has to be really light and it's got to be really delicate so you can like grab a wine glass or like hold an uh, like a little hamster without what, what, what what's funny is like it's like for his bit all the big swing in there like to have a dude or you know some human that like is missing a hand all of a sudden have a very elegant solution to that instead of the like uh, our hardware guy growing up had a hook you know and it's just like that yeah. changes how you interact with the world when you don't yeah. have the fingers well, like to give that that individual that probably means more to that community than anything else it's crazy which is why they have huge demand uh like wait list of right. demand the, the 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 way the community has kind of like supported them they've done like at least one crowdfunding round maybe two they've got a huge list of That's people so like ready for that thing to be commercialized uh i love that they started with the the full arm because it's the hardest one so if they've got full arm they can do a hand no problem it's already baked in legs are way easier than arms like they have a whole roadmap to basically do super high quality robotic I hate when prosthetics people say that. oh you oh. lost the leg that's the easiest one what are you doing <laughs> everybody says that. <laughs> pisses um, me off but yeah a ton of ton of like x apple ido like, oculus neural when, people, when we like, we got in at like it was like a hundred million dollar valuation right no it was lower than that oh okay it was, but it, it was but, uh, but but the thesis like our filter of like can it 100x from here remain true of like if they've solved human limbs this is a great investment at whatever price we're getting it right now right yeah it's a much bigger market than you might think um so i just it, prosthetics it may, it may sound niche but yeah prosthetics is a is a bigger market than you might think um prosthetics plus humanoid robots in the next 20 years is incredibly than, enormous either. yeah um and you and you've got not just prosthetics but also kind of uh either augmentation voluntary augmentation or replacement as Wait, people voluntary like, augmentation talk to me about that is that like the the tattoo of the future is if you're like getting older and oh. more feeble perhaps like dude could you imagine swapping out the hand for a new hand or legs if you're like yeah if, the, yeah, that yeah, is part yeah. of like what I love about my Thailand. dad just got a new hip, dude. And he's like, no, 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 right? He's got a new everything. Yeah. Give me, give me, give me Brett Favre in the prime legs. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want. I thought it was Ronnie Coleman's. Uh, <laughs> Get the brand. I think like, the thing that I thought when we were first looking at this was like where these guys are doing stuff that is just very special is around like the mind body interface. 
And they're like, hey, the first thing we'll do if your dad is interested is we'll put this cap on his head and we'll have him do these different things. Because even my dad, he lost his hand when he was seven years old. Um, like he, his entire life, he felt like he could still feel his fingers and his hands, Whoa. even though it was not there. Right. And so being able to like figure out how to really manage and that mind body interface and then turn it into what it was right. Like yeah. the pick up a grape thing that they've yeah. shown and stuff is like, it is, um, it, this is one of these things like it is extremely obvious that someone is going to do it at some point. And with guys like this working on it, it will be in our lifetime. And if people don't pick it up and run with it, it will be in 500 years. And it's like, well, let's do that now. Like let's yeah. invest in those things that like yeah. drag that future to the present. Um, and that's these guys. Yeah. Like it's pretty awesome. So fun, T- man. Tyler is amazing at this. And he's got a great, um, he's a very like future thinking person. He's got an amazing vision about this. And when you talk to him, um, he's so animated about the fact that like all this stuff has been, the, the individual technologies have been invented for a long time. Like they've been in labs that just like languished or they've been researched, but not built. And he's like, it just took somebody to put all these things together, yep. package it, commercialize it. Um, and hire sexy Apple engineers. Yeah. I mean, yeah. make a beautiful, make a beautiful, beautiful slide deck, like collect the humans and inspire them. Um, and yeah, I think that the like non-invasive, mind control robotic thing that that's a, actually a huge part of their value which yeah, is like huge. there's a cuff that monitors like what muscles fire as the person mentally manipulates wow. their ghost limb and like that is what trains the robot um so it, it's it's so <laughs> cool it's just it's so cool um i'm so psyched about it i think that is an amazing mission and amazing technology an amazing team and there are so many enormous adjacent markets. Like, even if prosthetics is as big as it gets, that'll still be an amazing company. But there is, it is one of these things yeah. that seems like such a small leap to go from that to. Yeah, if you're building a humanoid robot, like just, just call and license the tech. Why would you ever try and build your own hand when yeah. that exists? Right. It's yeah. Like, um, that's so cool. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Um, I, I love that one. I'm very uh, excited and grateful to kind of be supporting and part of that thing. Um, those guys are gonna, those guys are gonna do some very cool stuff. Um, and I can't wait to start seeing the like productized versions out in the world on people. Those I like mean, testimonial it, videos are gonna be insane right now. I don't know if you guys <laughs> feel pre rich, but I feel pre rich. <laughs> you feel pre rich, and we got a number of companies to go. So this is this is great news. Um, Maybe we should always do three quarters at a time. Just yeah. really, really like <laughs> rapid fire, rapid fire, make it pile up. Uh, another one. So General Fabco, General Fabrication Company, um, and Matt Palmer. This one is a little more abstract, but still very badass, very deep tech, mm-hmm. um, much earlier. So this is like, I, I love the starting of this story. Like Matt is a manufacturing nerd. Um started during covid was like at home in his apartment and like built an open source 3d printer to start building n95 masks that's like how this thing and he got like frustrated with how it was going and the like, state of the art in 3d printing he's like this is so much worse than it should be or could be and so he started like modding together all of these different open source technology projects and created what he calls like the world building 3d printer so this is like the fastest and it can replicate stuff like uh, like hard plastic products like camera phone cases or uh palm grips like these recorders and stuff like that and he's like his vision is very is to build like this self-replicating factory like build modular manufacturing equipment that can like he's using his products to build Wait, products what, what, that he's selling what what is the what's the the term for that like in space where they they fly out like the von neumann probes von neumann <laughs> yes. probes yeah fly out build your space building station <laughs> generate another one and keep going yeah it's like we, the we are invested Bob. in von neumann probes for earth <laughs> well you know it's interesting it's like in the 3d printing world like this is a thing even on these open source like products and stuff that exists when you get a product update you're going to buy the new product they send you like a third of it and then they say, and here are the instructions to print the other two thirds. No way. Assembly. Yeah. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so it is like the, you start to take the best of all of those pieces and say like, Hey, we're going to like professionalize this and really turn it into something that can work. Um, like that, that won't happen unless somebody goes to do the work. And so, um, it's, it's cool. It is cool. Yeah. He's got, uh, he's got a vision for how the future of manufacturing can get a lot less, uh, huge, like line uh manufacturing line like massive manufacturing equipment and much more like modular and fast and a ton of small kind of individual components getting like 
processed along. Um, I don't know, like sharp, sharp dude. Um, building, selling these things already on like a shoestring budget. I'm excited to see what he can do with uh, with a little bit of capital yeah. and like see how fast these things grow and a vision for not just like this fast, super fast 3D printing product, but also like some other similar uh, modular manufacturing uh, products as we go. Why building, do you whisper building that? A ton What's of different going, components. What? I'm trying. I don't know. <laughs> I, like he, it's hard to know when you're talking to founders what is like a thing they're sharing with you in confidence about their long term vision, oh, and yeah. a thing that's like, hey, go talk about that on a podcast. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm being like slightly cagey about his like five to ten year plan. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just like mentally sifting through his Twitter to be like, only talk about things that he's already tweeted about. It's hard. It's hard. See, I just have a a big mouth. <laughs> and uh, you got to know if you tell me. <laughs> this thing. is why we keep something secret from you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, man, that awesome, makes right? sense. Yeah, all right. I'm in, I'm in the future also. I see it now. I don't, I don't fault you guys. We'll tell Al about it like three podcasts from now. And he's going to love it so much. <laughs> like, my mind is blo- We invested in what? <laughs> Yeah. Always <laughs> are happy surprises. Yeah, I'm great. excited to read these updates too. This is the most fun. <laughs> <laughs> we do get good feedback on our investor updates. I like to we we I think we pride ourselves on that. Should feel a little like peeking into the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Feel like you got a little skin in the game. Um and we share some stuff there that's more uh secret. Yeah. Very More secret. secret. You'll, you'll secret. know yeah. names of companies. If see, if you're an LP, <laughs> there's things we can tell you that we can't <laughs> tell everybody. <laughs> Not to gatekeep or anything, but um, it's amazing. Do you, uh, Al? Speaking of gatekeeping, do you want to talk about your uh, your celebrity interactions recently? I feel like this is a good. Which ones? I just okay. like that I have to ask okay. that big question. Time us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did just big time us. I was thinking about the the beast. Oh, Jimmy. Now it's well, it's funny because now it's a it's an annual tradition. Every year we get together with uh there's I don't know how I even got myself into this group, but it's a great group of guys and we get together and play basketball for three days. And typically we'll hire like like uh, or we'll invite a uh uh train like a trainer that like, oh, and he trains Kyrie Irving and, and he's gonna come, Alex. And it's like, oh, that's neat. And it's very bizarre because I don't know if you guys bet you, bet you really blow his mind. You don't, I haven't tried to be better at basketball in 25 years. You know, like, I, like <laughs> yeah. I, I go to play and they're like, all right, run this drill. We're going to run it again. I'm like, my, my leg hurts now. This isn't how my body moves. I don't shift like that. <laughs> don't do lateral movements. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we'll end up, we'll end up with like a bunch of, it, it's very nice. Cause it's like, I make, I make 60% of the layups I take. And, uh, and it's, that, <laughs> it's that caliber of basketball. And I like that. We're all very comfortable in that space. And being a big guy, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, man, I, like, I just feel very dominant against, uh, against these like sort of, you know, nerdy tall guys they'll send in against me. Andrew Wilkinson. <laughs> He's out oh, there, yeah, no. dude. That guy, that he's, guy, he's he an is, idiot. He doesn't stand a chance. In the paint. He is <laughs> soft in the paint. I dominated that guy. I was, I was just oh, yelling God. mismatch, just like I didn't even see him when I turned around. He's my size. I didn't even see him. I just went right through him. Uh, but but it's amazing, it's amazing Al. But uh, yeah, it's no. It, well, it's funny because it's uh, it's just it's a bunch of guys. House in the house. <laughs> it's it's a bunch of great guys that like that like all have done very uh, very impressive things. Uh, <laughs> like like i mean the fact like mr beast we we all sort of he brings his own chocolate which is kind of a fun uh, uh that's a fun thing to be known for when you show yeah. up to a party with your own boxes of chocolate but uh that dude that dude gets so zeroed in on what he's tagging like he is he is 1000 percent focused and so it's a, it's a fun dude to chat with and then he's uh we just go play basketball and and uh like bunch of <laughs> everybody everybody is uh is is very rich and then you then you step on the basketball court it's like like uh, in my you know in my mind i think about this all the time we're like celebrities you know like surely angelina jolie lives a blessed life and it's like oh no man that chick wakes up and steps on legos and kicks the shoes by the door and like yeah wishes somebody had taken the trash out already and has to get the dishwasher loaded just like everybody else just like well probably and uh and, and like it's nice to be reminded of that because because you build people up like personas up in your mind it turns out they're just people out there showing up trying to do good things and uh and so that yeah i don't i don't know how that was pertinent to 
to all this. But I, I'm excited to have eaten, you know, Jimmy's chocolate and played basketball with him, as well as uh, a number of other people, Sean and uh, and Sam that do the My First Million guys. It's, yeah. it's their group that puts it together. And very fun dudes, a lot of fun personalities, and it's nice to talk to people not on the podcast. See, you get if you guys ever meet us in person, we're not like this. This is <laughs> this is a persona we do. Okay, like if you could just get us one on one, we're fine. We're nice people. We. Don't, this abrasiveness, this anger that we fuel the podcast with, it's a show. It's just, it's a thing. It's a shtick. Uh, did you, and I hate to ask, <laughs> learn anything? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the, oh, I see. You're leading me to the thing we talked about an hour ago that I completely forgot about. No, so there's uh, there's this, this guy, Zach, who was like a Founders Fund investor guy for a lot of years. And now he invests uh, on, his, on his own for, like, he's got a cool gig where he's like, no, I just make investments and then everybody believes in me so much that they all try and pile on money behind me. And so I control billions, but. I know exactly how they feel. I was like, yeah, same, bro. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but it, but it's funny because he's like, he's like, you think about, I was, I was asking him like, what are you investing in right now as as we play poker? Which, by the way, never a worse poker player on planet Earth than all in Doan, every hand. I, <laughs> I know, all, I, all I know about how to play poker is from what I've seen on movies, which is not representative of how poker goes. So I'm like, this one could be it, and you don't know what I have. And and they just eat me alive. I'm out by the third hand every time. The, so we're sitting there playing poker uh, in a very short-lived stint. And uh, and I was like, well, what are you investing in? He's like, honestly, man, I have a Mount Rushmore of of death. Of like, of like if we... It, so there's four... There's like cancer. There's, uh, there's diabetes. There's like neuro stuff of like dementia and Alzheimer's and stuff. And then uh, heart disease. And he's like, if I, if I, if you can cure cancer, you only extend the average lifespan by like three years because one of these other ones will take it. Like you've got to, if, if we want longevity, we have to be tackling all these. He's like, so I'm actively looking for opportunities in each of these four. And if any of those can solve a thing, like I've done a great thing and I'm placing bets in those. And, uh, and it was, it was interesting to me because I was like, yeah, that's kind of reassuring, um, for, for, or, or, and a good reminder for us as we like, as we sort of fine tune our investment thesis is like, as long like we don't want to be placing bets on stuff that if we're right still kind of doesn't matter. Yeah. And we've we've probably I mean you could argue that we've made a few investments that would fall in that in that world of like we we liked it it was a fun it, it was a thing and uh and even if we're 1000% right we haven't like cured cancer. We haven't so- solved a major thing. And so you see more and more of our investments go towards like energy, yeah. they go toward yep. future of computing, they go to you know it's like it's cool um future stuff that if we're right we've we've helped change uh you know the, the sort of the pace of, of humanity but i thought it was i thought it was just a great way of looking at stuff and being like what are the four things and and you should have a mount rush more of like finance and a mount rush more of of energy and a mount rush more of of quilting obviously uh <laughs> yes, you know what yes. what what do you need like if you're right in one of these it's going to make a big difference and just distilling it down to those and uh yeah it was it was it was a lot of lot of fun chats in there. I think that, that is a, <laughs> that is a great way to put our our ever evolving thesis is like thank you <laughs> <laughs> tackling ever bigger problems. Hopefully, we get them early, but it's more important, I think, to find a big problem than to be early. Like we've started doing a few later investments that are like close. I don't know, no. closer to fifty or hundred million valuation. They're more baked companies, but it's also like I have no doubt that this is yeah. a large problem, a huge market, and we're yeah, well that, on the way to something. The difference between a ten million dollar and a fifty million dollar like entry price for a ten, fifty, hundred billion dollar outcome is like not massive. Yep, that's what we were talking about earlier. The uh, you know a lot of a lot of the the deals that happen with a lot of fervor around them oftentimes are just like. You know, they're bust because you you accelerate due diligence. You're arguing for allocation, all that stuff. But then there's a bunch of, I mean, if you get a chance to put money in Uber, right? This is what Bo was saying earlier. Like, put money in Uber. Yeah. You were right. You're going to do it. And, uh, you know, Zach Zach had a play that went into Ozempic. And I'm like, how, how did you get in on He's like, when you see an Ozempic, you get in on Ozempic. Like, it's yeah. it's going to cure addiction and diabetes. And like, uh, that's a that's a drug you want to be behind. And you put money in no matter where you get, uh, you get a chance to put money into it. And there's, there's, 
you know, maybe six of those deals in the last 10 years that are like, oh yeah, 100%, anything you can do to be a part of that, that solves, that. that is it, that's the thing. And, uh, and so like, yeah, there's, there's both those that you do anything to be a part of. And then also you need to ignore everything that's not those because they're all mm-hmm. wrong. This is a, actually a part of, um, I like the adage, like your fund size is your strategy. Yep. Your fund size oh, yeah. is your fund strategy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So I think there's a, uh, it's so true in, in some LPs I talk to, there's like, a it's a hesitation to invest in smaller funds. They were like, oh, we did to, like, don't, we need a $75 million fund at least because, like, we've got some yeah, we've requirements. Got billions we're trying and, to, yeah. and I'm like, yo, like, on a cash basis, you just want to get exposure, get some amount of money into those potentially absolutely yeah. incredible outcomes. And there's way more spots for a fifty dollars to $200,000 check in a $2 million or $5 million round than there is three million dollar yeah. check right and so like there's one three million dollar check and then a bunch of the other ones that like get yeah. you get you access in future round. yeah yeah so i like our theory in being a smaller fund writing minority checks is like it will always we have a better shot at getting money into those 100x thousand x ten thousand x investments and if you want to follow on now you got an ex- I mean, yeah. we, you got a guy we makes know it, makes it easier to follow on and get more double down on them as we see them evolving um like really I, listener what we're trying to say is if you're not backing our fund <laughs> this is the last time we're coming to you please i just want all of these guts <laughs> we, it's just not the, we need your <laughs> donations we need your donations welcome to the rolling fund pledge jerry's, drive. jerry's kids <laughs> need your donations people that's episode one caught up on q2 <laughs> q3 uh we'll be back extremely shortly uh with a q4 and beyond and and beyond yeah